Partial funding for the original Earth Revealed series was provided by the Annenberg CPB project. At first glance, there's nothing particularly remarkable about this scene. These are objects that you might find at any typical campsite. However, there is a connection between them that goes beyond their obvious function. Most of these items, as well as those that fill our everyday lives, are made, at least in part, of minerals, the natural materials of which the Earth is composed. Geologists define minerals as solid substances that are naturally occurring and inorganic. Minerals also have a definite chemical composition in which the atoms are arranged in an orderly pattern called a crystalline structure. Thousands of different chemical compositions and crystalline structures occur in nature, and combinations of these result in thousands of different mineral varieties. If we were to take away the objects from this campsite around me that require minerals in their manufacture, there'd be very little left to look at. or sit on. The minerals we use in the manufacture of consumer goods and that are a part of virtually any man-made object you can name are also found here in the rocks that make up the Earth's crust. In this open pit mine, iron ore is extracted from the Earth. It is smelted and combined with other mineral products to form the steel used to make automobiles, ships, and skyscrapers. From these sand dunes, quartz grains are separated, then melted and molded to form the glass that fills the windows of the world. Minerals have tremendous commercial value and are important to our lives in many ways. But many geologists study minerals in order to discover the secrets they contain about the history of the Earth. A mineral is like a little fossil. It's a historian of, of a past time. Fossils to us tell us about past living conditions of where that fossil grew and lived at a very different age. And minerals do the same thing. Like fossils, minerals in a given rock are millions if not billions of years old but they trap within themselves, within their own internal compositions, their own history. Thousands of different minerals have been found on Earth, and new ones are still being discovered. But most of these minerals are rare. Some have only been found at a single location on the planet. In fact, there are only a hundred or so common mineral varieties found in most rocks. The differences between mineral varieties are related to their atomic structure. The atoms that make up a mineral are perfectly arranged in an almost infinite three-dimensional pattern. This structure is held together by different types of chemical bonds. The conditions under which a mineral forms control the internal structure of atoms within the mineral. And it is the arrangement of atoms that determines what a mineral looks like and how it behaves. Diamonds have long been coveted as perhaps the most beautiful and precious of all gems. Graphite, which is used in pencils, is extremely common and far less valuable. Although these minerals are clearly different, both minerals are made of the same substance, pure carbon. Their different physical properties are a result of the different structural arrangements of their carbon atoms. Diamond is the hardest of all minerals. Why is it so hard? It's because it has a very special, unique covalent bond um, that holds the different carbon atoms so tightly that they cannot be scratched. 
In contrast, graphite, also a carbon mineral, is held the carbon at the same carbon atoms are held with a very different kind of bond. And it's a very soft bond, and that's the mineral becomes soft, and that's why we can use graphite in, in pencils. Um, so hardness is one aspect, and it's directly related to the bonding that holds the structure together. Graphite is formed under low pressure conditions near surface, while diamond is formed under tremendously high pressures, in fact, needs great depths in the earth to form, depths that are well within the mantle. It is these depths and pressures that give a diamond the very strong chemical bonds that hold its atoms together and make it the hardest substance on Earth. The dazzling beauty of this gem makes it the rare and sought-after jewel it has been throughout history. The physical properties of minerals are used to distinguish one mineral from another. Diamond and graphite, for example, differ in color, crystal shape, hardness, and luster, or shininess. Physical properties such as these are easily identified by geologists using simple tools. Each mineral has a distinctive set of physical properties based on its own unique combination of chemical composition and crystalline structure. Physical properties include the color of the mineral, the way it reflects light, the way in which the mineral breaks, and some simple chemical reactions. These are used to help identify the mineral. It's easy to see that this rock is made of different minerals because there are four different colors of mineral crystals. Color is a fundamental physical property of minerals. Look at this silver mineral called muscovite. It looks almost like a stack of paper with the individual sheets flaking apart quite easily. The tendency of minerals to break along flat planes is called cleavage. And cleavage is a property that's determined by the crystalline structure of the mineral. This pink mineral is feldspar. Unlike muscovite, it has cleavage, but there are two directions of cleavage at about 90 degrees to one another. The hardness of minerals is another identifying characteristic. Quartz is quite hard. It can't even be scratched by this steel hammer. Calcite looks similar to quartz, but is much softer and scratches easily. Like cleavage, hardness is a physical property that's determined by the crystalline structure of the mineral and is a good way of differentiating between these two minerals. Another physical property of calcite is that it dissolves in dilute acid. Calcite is a carbonate mineral, and the acid releases the carbon as carbon dioxide gas. Quartz is a silicate mineral. It doesn't dissolve in acid, and so there's no obvious chemical reaction. The way in which minerals reflect light is the physical property called luster. Feldspar has a dull luster. It doesn't shine at all. But compare that to muscovite, which has a glassy luster. Metallic minerals, like galena, reflect light like a polished metal surface. Pyrite also has a metallic luster, but is a different color than galena. One useful way to distinguish between some metallic minerals is a physical property called streak. When we rub a mineral against a porcelain plate, we powder the mineral. And by comparing the color of the mineral in its powdered form to the coarse crystalline form, we can distinguish some types of minerals. Hematite is reddish brown in its powdered form and gray metallic in its coarse crystalline form. Compare this to galena, which is gray, both in the powdered form and the coarse crystalline form. Geologists in the field use simple tests like these to help identify minerals and rocks. Minerals form in a variety of geologic conditions. Most are relatively rare, and only a hundred or so are plentiful. But of all the minerals found on Earth, no group is more abundant than those made primarily of silica and oxygen, the silicate minerals. 
Although the silicates lack the political power of gold and the exquisite beauty of diamonds, their economic value is enormous. They provide construction material for everything from gravel roads to high-rise skyscrapers. One of their common ingredients, the element silicon, is essential to the computer industry. Pure silicon is a hard metal that can be sliced to a thickness of only a fraction of a centimeter. And like most metals, it can also conduct electricity. These properties make silicon the ideal raw material for the manufacture of microprocessor chips used in computers. Today, computer technology is so widespread that we tend to take it for granted. But without the thin silicon wafers made from common silicate minerals, the awesome processing power of the computer age might never have come about. Minerals have played a fundamental role in the political, economic, and technological evolution of human civilization. Wars have been fought and empires created over the geographic distribution of precious metals, of gems, and industrial minerals. And today, mineral resources are more important than ever before. 